Alex, what are you doing? That's right, folks. I'm talking about Totally Spies again. Back at it again. I totally Spies. So for those of you who missed the first video, allow me to recap it for you. It's weird, it's weird, it's weird, it's weird. It's very, very weird. And being weird as it is, I figured it only made sense to double back on the show and talk about two episodes in particular. Because when it comes to Totally Spies, having one Catgirl episode wasn't enough. No, sir, it needed two. Alex? So, for those who don't know, I've already covered Totally Spies in a previous video. It was a big one. It was about fetishes, because that's the content I make, apparently. And if you want a more full rundown of the show, go check that out. It's demonetized because YouTube hates me. I said bad words like, but, and they're like, get this off our Christian platform immediately. This is an unholy demon. I'm sending it back to hell where it belongs. But for now, I'll just do a quick recap. That way you know where it came from, who made it, and whatnot. So the show came out in the early 2000s and was developed by David Michael and Vincent Chelvon de Merce. I don't know why I said that like I was Hinga Dinga Dergering, because he's French. Hinga Dinga Dergen. Let's try it again. Vincent Chalvon de Merce. I did it again. Guys, I am the worst. I am I'm the worst. If you ever want to say Sabre Spark and screw up my name, you have permission because I can't say your name. One more time. Vincent Chavon de Merce. Okay, that's close enough. All right, so they made this show back in the early 2000s. Initially, they wanted to make a show about a girl band and that the show was more of like a auxiliary. Who says auxiliary? And that the show would itself be promoting an actual band. Guess what? Didn't happen. Instead, they had another idea. They were like, hey, these boys have a ton of action shows. What about the girls? They need action shows too. So let's take this band idea and change it to a secret agent idea. Charlie's Angels meets Britney Spears. And that's the show. That's essentially the concept. And it worked. It worked really well because the show went on for 12 years and had a total of six seasons. And let it be known that during those 12 years of the show airing, that it really influenced the generation who watched it. And I mean in a way that it really help develop our taste of what we have today. You know I'm right, you know I'm right, you know I'm right. So when it comes to our generation, guys, the folks who grew up with this stuff, when we look back and try to figure out why are we the way that we are, you can thank Disney, Space Jam, and Totally Spies. It's not our fault, we're just the clay. You guys are the ones who crafted us. But Professor Utonium accidentally added an extra ingredient to the concoction. Chemical X. So for those who don't know, here's a quick synopsis about the show and what it's about. We follow three teenage girls, Alex, Sam, and Clover. They follow the typical teenage girl type where they're all about fashion, about boys, except they're secret agents. They work for an agency for this guy named Jerry Lewis. That's actually his name. Hyven Schwaven, it's Jerry Lewis. <laughs> Man. There are some viewers who have no idea of who I'm talking about. You ever hear this voice in cartoons? These babies will be in the stores while he's still grappling with the pickle matrix. Blavin, blavin. Yeah, that's because it's Jerry Lewis. He's a comedian. Though, to be fair, Jerry Lewis in this show isn't based on Jerry Lewis that I know of. He just shares the same name. Wow, this was a long tangent that has nothing to do with anything. Let's move on. Ah, for blavin out. So the girls go on these crazy adventures, trying to stop villains from ruining the world. It's like James Bond meets Charlie's Angels meets the Spice Girls. That's what this show is. And to be fair, it's got some good energy. I like the girls. They're fun characters to follow. They're not just empty headed teenage girls who are like, I'm always about fashion. Like they like their fashion, they can enjoy it, but it's not like they're boring characters that they have nothing interesting to do or say or be about. And because of the plots of this show, where they're doing like the craziest stuff ever to the characters, it keeps things interesting. It, it gets pretty wild. Take your best shot. Also, there's a lot of anime influence in this show. The chibi heads, the big eyes, the blush, just look. 
You don't say. Okay, fine. You caught me. Okay. So the first episode is from season one, episode 15, and it's called Wild Style. Oh, I'm sorry, what was it? Wild Style? Wild Style? Yep. What are you, a DJ? By the way, sorry about the cropping for this episode. Amazon, you suck. Why'd you do this to me? It's so cramped to watch this stuff. Ugh, whatever, let's go. The episode starts off with a boat, a boat full of people and the Mediterranean Ocean, and it gets sucked down a vortex. Hold it! Mediterranean Ocean, Mediterranean Ocean. <laughs> we then go to our B plot. The girls are at school. Clover, the blonde one, is wearing these platform shoes and she's trying to win over this boy she's crushing on. And it's not really working out. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. Max, um, Max. Oh. And in typical fashion, like with every episode of this show ever, Jerry somehow like takes the girls like out of their position where they're at school and he sucks them up out of nowhere to his location. It, it's so weird. In the next episode, it gets even weirder. We'll get to it. But yeah, the girls are sucked away and they show up in front of Jerry who is like, yo girls, this boat disappeared. I need you to go check it out. Yesterday afternoon, the luxury cruise liner Juliet disappeared in the Mediterranean Sea with 200 passengers on board. It vanished from radar, a complete mystery. Mind you that the girls, I believe, are in Hollywood, or I think they are. They're definitely in California, like Southern California. And I love this. Jerry's like, I need you to go to the Mediterranean Sea and check out what happened. Here's a boat. Go sail across the Pacific Ocean, or I guess go around South America, whatever, no matter what, instead of giving them a plane, they're on a boat, and it would have taken them like 30 days to get to the Mediterranean Sea. So I know it's cartoon logic, just, you know, deal with it. But I find it hilarious to think that these girls are on a boat for like almost a month just trying to get to the sea. It's like, Jerry, please let us fly there. Why'd you give us a boat? Three weeks later. The girls show up to the site where the boat disappeared. The vortex then sucks them up. They escape it. And then they find this island that's actually not like on the charts. They get on the island and then they run into Tom Cruise from Castaway. <laughs> Tom Cruise then is like, oh no, they'll discover my secret. And he shoots this little like, what, what's it called again? A, a flute? That's not it. That's an instrument. Uh, a dart. He, he shoots a dart, hits Clover, and she starts to turn into a cat girl. Those eyebrows are looking pretty bushy, girl. Whoa! When's the last time you waxed? What are you talking about? <laughs> also, in a fate worse than death itself, a bunch of personas come out of nowhere and attack the girls. I can't run in these shoes! Oh no! Clover, you're turning into a cat girl. Oh, this is not going to affect the audience who grew up with it at all. Guys, I'm hungry. How about we talk about this over a tasty saucer of milk? So the girls go into this compound they discover on the island and investigate. Things are getting worse for Clover, like she's going full on cat. And then the girls discover that the villain, the one behind this, is some fashion designer. <laughs> are you all ready for this? Her her premise, her, her idea of why she is doing this is absolutely dark. I was like caught off guard with how dark this is. All right, get this. She's transforming humans into personas so she can skin them and make full coats out of them. Like what the actual hell. My hybrid creations will become the world's first form-fitting, seamless fur coats made without a single stitch. Ew, gross. That's really dark. You're skinning humans and taking their DNA recombination fur. Isn't this show great? You can't say it wasn't creative. Like it? It's genuine lawyer. The girls get captured. Sam and Alex are roped up because it happens all the time in this show. Clover is taken away. Alex and Sam break out. 
run down and find Clover. Oh, by the way, Alex is like, no, no. Sam is like, oh, don't worry. Give me a second. I literally have an antidote. Let's go. And the idea is to take the antidote and put it into a fire sprinkler system and that they would spray the antidote over all of the other personas and save them that way because that's how fire sprinklers work. Why not? Empty serum showers for everybody. Ready for a fire drill? The girls then break in. They use a radio to shatter the tubes of the fursonas and free them, because that happened, I guess. Why not? And then Clover and the rest of the people are saved. And then the fire sprinklers go off and save the rest of the folks who were transformed into furries. Clover saved. She gets away. The day is saved, and that's the end of our A plot. Oh, and you'll love this. So the villain is pushed into a vat of her own serum, and she comes out, and she's like transformed into like a multi creature, like some kind of alchemy project gone wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the one. <laughs> And then the girls go back home. Turns out the boy is like, hey, I like you, Clover, because you're not tall, because tall women scare me. And that's the episode. Ah! Max, are you all right? Yeah, it's just ever since I got decked by this giant woman, I'm freaked by tall girls. Like I said, we get two Catgirl episodes. I present to you all season six, episode two. Nine Lives. It starts off in the best way possible. A furry statue and then furry Pennywise. I'm not writing this. It's in the show. I'm just saying what I'm seeing. But enough about A plot. What about B plot? It's, it's weird. So the B plot is about Clover and how she needs to convince her mom that she's an earlobe doctor. Apparently, Clover wants to be a fashionista. Her mom wants her to be an earlobe doctor. The mom's visiting, and Clover's like, girls, you have to help me convince my mom that I operate on people's earlobes. Oh, nothing. Just studying your earlobe. <sighs> my earlobe? What for? Because my mom's coming to visit today, and I need to be prepared. This show is weird. <laughs> like, out of all the things I've covered on my channel, when it comes to this series of weird episodes, Totally Spies blows everything out of the water. It's like this never-ending treasure trove of potential, and I love it. Also, Alex's voice is different, so I guess there was a voice change at some point. Same with Jerry. Good morning, ladies. I trust you found the tram ride enjoyable. Jerry? In the flesh. Rubber flesh, that is. So our A-plot is about Alex and how she's volunteering at this cat shelter. While there, we meet our villain. Are you ready for this? Feline Dion. I'm Professor Dion. Feline Dion. It sounds like you're as excited about cats as I am. Needless to say, Feline is interesting. Cats are the most amazing, intelligent, glorious creatures on the entire planet. I only wish we humans could be more <laughs> like them. Um, um... Okay, so remember how I said I would talk about this episode and how the girls would be sucked up and, like, teleport to Jerry? Explain this one to me. Sam here is on a running track, gets sucked up by something, and somehow ends up on an airplane. They all end up on an airplane. And there's no mention of teleportation technology, so you got me, show. I, I have no idea how that happened. But this is also the show that pulled off this maneuver, so I'm not too surprised. <laughs> Not scientifically possible! So Jerry tells the girls that there's this person going around the world transforming these monuments into cat versions of their former self. So you got like a cat version of the, what's this thing called again? Uh, Mount Rushmore. You got a cat version of the Sphinx. Oh, wait, is that what it is? The Sphinx is already cat, right? I'll look that up later. And of course, the Leaning Tower of Pisa is now a giant scratching post because cat stuff. So the girls take off to Italy to investigate. 
while there, they're climbing the tower because they have to. <laughs> they don't really explain the logic here. They turn invisible, they run up the tower. In the process, Alex gets poked by this random claw. I, I don't even know why it's there, which I imagine is the reason why she starts to transform into a cat herself later on. Then the girls are like, we gotta run away because a cop saw us. And there's this long scene of them running away from the cop, takes forever, they finally get away, and they're like, well, I guess that's that, and they go back to California. By the way, I think these girls are much better secret agents than Stripperella. Erotica, take notes. These girls can teach you a thing or two. So as time goes on, Alex starts to act more like a cat, where she's like licking herself, drinking bowls of milk, you know, cat stuff. It's also great because they go out to eat dinner and Sam is like, hey, Alex, why are you being weird? And then Alex just straight up licks her face. This moment caught me so off guard. I was like, okay, uh, that just happened. Alex, what are you doing? And 5,000 lesbians were born from this single moment. And for some reason, outside the restaurant, there's a water fountain that's turned into cat litter. And then the bully of the girls just randomly drives by, gets pissed off at the girls being like, this better not be your fault, takes off. Then Alex starts to be a cat. Guess what? She's going to take a dump in the litter. Thank God Sam and Clover are like, yo, stop that. No, none of that. None of that. <laughs> The girls then go to the cat shelter and discover a secret laboratory. Wow, what a fun room! In the laboratory, they come face to face with Feline. Feline does her villain thing and monologues, saying that she wants to turn the world into cats because cats are the best. Uh, the girls are locked up. Feline runs off to go to a school to infect the water supply with her cat transformation serum. It's like a reverse of the last episode. It's so strange because the way they spread the antidote was through a fire sprinkler. And the way that this villain, Feline, is spreading her, I guess, serum is through a fire sprinkler. So, you know, <laughs> copy paste. Now to inject the cat DNA serum into the school's water line. The girls break out of their prison run down to the school, they face off with Feline, they have a cat fight, there's a cat fight. <laughs> and then Alex uses this pendulum to hypnotize Feline, and also herself. <laughs> At the end, they stop her, Jerry shows up, he talks to Alex, he's like, let's get you back to being a human, and Alex is like, I don't know, man. I kind of like this. Which, you know what? You know what? That's her choice. Actually, I kind of like it. I was thinking I might stay this way. But Jerry's like, nope, no, 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 none of that. You're coming back to the base. We're going to fix this. You'd better come with me. There's only one fairy, and it's Jerry. He literally shows up in a dog mask for no reason whatsoever. Unless he's taunting Alex, I guess. That's Maybe that's why. Oh, and for the end of the B-plot, Clover's mom discovers her, like, catalog of drawings. She's like, hey, you're really good at this. Be a fashionista. I support you. I also have a bunch of noodle fingers. Forgive you, sweetie. I'm thrilled that you found your passion. And that's it. Those are the two cat girl transformation episodes from Totally Spies. They're weird. They're a bit derivative, but you know what? Who cares? This show was so off the walls. It had so many strange concepts. The girls went through a lot of weird transformations. You got giants. They were shrunk at times. They had inflated heads. Once more, this show is like a well of potential when it comes to reviewing stuff for weird episodes. There's like no limit to it. Heck, I'll probably do another episode like this in the future, except for that one. Ah, a clothes shrinking ray! Pre-shrunk my butt! Nope. 